All right, welcome back guys. I'm gonna take you on a quick tour around the property because we just got a lot of rain. <laughs> I slipped. Um, all right, we got some standing water there under the cedar tree. Um, so how much did we get? We got two inches of rain in the last 48 hours. And that that is a lot, you know, you hear two inches of rain, that's a lot. But uh, until you like calculate it out, um, it's hard to appreciate how much it really is. So I'm a big nerd numbers guy, right? And so just hear me out, okay? Stay with me for like 30 seconds. Um, we have 10 acres of property, just over 10 acres. And so it's about a half a million square feet of land. And if it rained two inches on that whole half a million square feet, it's about 75,000 cubic feet of water. Now, each cubic foot is seven and a half gallons. And so we're looking at over a half a million gallons of water that fell this week. Um, over half a million. Now, to put that into perspective, because it's like that number might just kind of fry in our brain too. But we have these uh, fairly large uh, water storage tanks for rainwater collection. They store, I think, 275 gallons. They're about three feet by four feet um, by four feet. And uh, they store 275 gallons. The over half a million gallons <clears throat> would fill 2,000 of those. So just think about that abundance. 2,000 you know, rainwater large containers fell on our property this week. And here's some of it right here. So this was completely dry in the fall. It's about five times, I mean, bigger than it was even seasonally when it fills up. Five, I mean, it's, it's large. Um, but it is a seasonal pond. Uh, it was dammed up before. Some beavers lived here. And then, I don't know what happened to the beaver. I think a neighbor shot him. But uh, then the dam broke eventually, and uh, it doesn't store as well as it did before. But um, I want to uh, just make a quick note. If you look around a pond, there's much more uh, growth. So more trees, more dense vegetation, and that's called the edge effect. That's one of the edge effects anyway in nature, where land meets water. So if you can increase the edge on a pond, the uh, actual perimeter of the pond, then you're going to get more diversity on your property. Um, it's one of the principles in permaculture uh, philosophy that you should use edges and value the marginal. So all the margins on your property, all those edges, there's going to be more species in those places. Okay, more places to hide, more places to get water, all that stuff. So um, it's good to have water and it's good to dam things up from time to time, but not to let water stagnate. So, I'll keep moving here. Um, all right. It's pretty cool being out here. You don't often see just so much water on the ground. Um, there's our elm forest off to this side. And, uh, and then we're coming up on our, our persimmon trees. <clears throat> um, if you've been to our classes, you know that the persimmon trees, they like, they like you know, water on the roots. And right now they're getting a lot of it. So it's just flooded in that whole area over there. Um, just a, there we go. Just a quick note about um, the importance of water on the land. Think about in the city, guys. Uh, when it rains in the city, the water goes into the gutters. It goes into the sewer. It goes through culverts and ditches and it gets flooded away very quickly. Uh, my, my friend pointed out uh, this from a book he read, that the job of a civil engineer is to get water out of the city as fast as possible. Whereas in permaculture, we want to be thinking the opposite direction because all life depends on water. And so when it rains, the soil life benefits and grows and so does the insect life. And then that brings in the birds and it brings in all sorts of other life. And so we don't want to divert the water away. We want to slow it down, soak it, and spread it. So slow, sp soak, and spread the water through the land. Um, and that's something that Mark Shepard says in Restoration Agriculture. <clears throat> now, um, so how do we do that? Uh, we can build swales. We can build um, depressions in the ground where water pools. We can build ponds. Um, and, and it's not that hard to do a lot of these things okay but it stores water in the land for when it needs it just look how much water we could be making use of right now 
um, walking along this creek. There's a lot flowing through there. Um, now, uh, where was I? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, we can, we can build lots of uh, earthworks to collect and store the water so that it needs it during the times of drought. And I'm getting rained on here. I, I don't want to have to stop my video, but I don't want to ruin my, uh, my phone. So um, we're coming right now around to the main pond area. And if it's still here, I want to show you guys something for sure. It's very exciting to me to see it. And yes, here it is. Check this out. Can we see it? There it is. Okay, so it's a very small um, bubbling of water out of the ground. So a very small spring. Now, when I first moved here, uh, there was a Bible verse in the Old Testament, Isaiah 43, 19, that stood out to me, just really jumped out to me for some reason. And it said, behold, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Um, even now it springs up. I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So, um, the idea of streams and springs and all that um, jumped out at me and we hadn't seen any until last May. Uh, maybe I'll put a link to this large, larger spring that popped up in our front pasture. But it is very cool to see um, when it rains a lot, there's more in the land and then it pops up in different places. So this is our main pond area. This thing is probably 10 times the surface area of what it was last summer and fall. So very cool. You can see on the edges, much more diversity of, you know, rose bushes and trees and all that good stuff. So that edge effect in action. All right. Um, last thing um, <laughs> I want to say here is um, after a rainfall is be on the lookout for mushrooms. And so, you know, in the 24 to 36 to several days after a major rainfall, uh, much more mushrooms will be popping up because they need water for their mushroom, you know, for the fruit body growth. Um, many different species can be found. So learn to identify, of course, be careful. Um, but if you have a, um, if you think with a permaculture mindset, it's cool to inoculate uh, stumps with uh, mushrooms that you would like to grow whether it be cordyceps or lion's mane or oyster mushrooms or any number of um, medicinal ones. Uh, Paul Stamets has a chapter in his Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms about permaculture with a mycological twist. And so how you use fungi to recycle the things on your property to, you know, to have food and, and so forth. You can inoculate a stump with fungi and bury it in the ground. And then when the conditions are right, you can, it will fruit mushrooms. And so you basically can plant them around your property. So that's a very cool possibility. Anyway, guys, it's been good. Um, my screen's getting wet. I'll, I'll talk to you later.